Chapter 19 Brad stepped back into the darkness, but they had already seen his face. Surprisingly, he looked more frightened than they did. He started toward them, pulling the parka hood back over, up over his head as if he could hide inside it. Corey and Lisa stepped back toward the tall windows. Lisa backed into a music stand, sending it toppling to the floor. The loud crash made them both cry out, startled. Brad stopped halfway into the room. His eyes were darting from side to side. He seemed unable to decide what to do next. He muttered something under his breath. Corey could hear only the last word, mistake. Brad said it again. Again, Corey could hear only mistake. Was Brad threatening them? Was he warning them not to come after him? They couldn't tell. They couldn't hear him. Brad stood staring at them, his tiny black eyes wide in panic. Inside the parka, his forehead was covered with large beads of perspiration. His face was bright red. Suddenly, he turned and, without saying another word, fled from the room. Corey pulled away from Lisa's frightened grip and ran after him, but Brad slammed the door hard before Corey could get there, and then Corey and Lisa heard a loud bang. Hey! Lisa yelled. Corey tried to nod. He tried it again. Again. He tried pulling, then pushing. He turned to her, looking very worried. It won't turn. He must have shoved something against the door. Are you sure? Maybe you're pushing when you should be pulling. You want to try? Corey snapped. She slumped down on a folding chair and gently rubbed her ankle. No. Guess, guess I'll take your word for it. Was that Anna's brother? Yeah. Are we going to call the police when we get out of here? If we get out of here, she added, just to show that she could still be her usual sarcastic self. I don't know, Corey said, trying to do it again without success. I... I think I'd like to talk to Anna first. She might be in danger. If we send the police after Brad, there's no telling what he might do to Anna. Let's just get out of here, Lisa said worriedly. How are we? Oh, I know. Call Harwood. He and that girl are probably still make it out across the hall, right? Corey shrugged. He put his face against the door and yelled, Hey, Harwood! Let us out of here! Harwood! No response. He tried again. Louder. Still no reply. Oh, how stupid, Lisa said. Stop yelling. No one can hear. This is the music room. Everything is soundproof. Curry stood staring at the doorknob for a few seconds. Then he turned, ran to the window, and pulled up the metal blinds. The room looked down the student parking lot. It was a clear night. The rows of cars reflected the bright parking light pole lights. Hey, look! Curry yelled. Brad was running to a small car on the edge of the lot. Curry watched him climb into the car and speed away, his tires squealing on the asphalt. Come on, let's get out of here, Corey said. He unlocked one of the windows and pulled it all the way open. But we're two stories up, Lisa protested. Corey stuck his head out the window and leaned way out. A few seconds later, he pulled it back in. No problem, he said, grinning. I'm a gymnast, remember? Uh-oh. I don't like that smile on your face. Are you going to go into your Tarzan act now? Yeah, he said, scratching himself and nodding his head at Tarzan's chimp. Well, I don't exactly feel like Jane, Lisa said, wincing a pink shirt to put away on her ankle. No problem. I'll come back for you, Corey said. What are you going to do? There's a three-inch ledge that runs under the windows. I'm going to walk the ledge to that sycamore tree, then climb onto that extended branch and slide down the trunk. Maybe we should just stay here until they open school Monday morning, Lisa said. Thanks for the encouragement, Corey said, looking down at the narrow granite ledge. We could sit back, relax, and watch my ankle swell, Lisa suggested, hopping over to the window, taking Corey's hand and pulling it back from the window. No problem, Corey told her, pulling away. He lifted a leg over the window and started to ease himself out onto the ledge. Really? No problem. I could do this blindfolded. Lisa moved away from the window, plopped down to a chair, and put her ankle up on the attached desk. She couldn't bear to watch. Corey had both feet on the ledge now. He was still holding on to the bottom of the window frame. He looked to his left. He had to move only ten feet or so and then he would be at the tree. He carefully turned around so that he was facing the window. He took a sideways step. Hey, it's slippery! Oh, great, Lisa called, rubbing her sore ankle. Get back in here! No, I'm out of here, he said, but he didn't sound quite as confident as he had a few seconds before. 
He had to let go of the window frame to take a second step. That meant he was now pressing against solid brick. Moving slowly, carefully, his palms pressed against the brick wall, he took another sideways step, then another. To his dismay, the ledge suddenly narrowed. He had to stay on a tiptoe to stay on it, but staying on a tiptoe made it hard to balance. He realized he had been holding his breath the whole time. He exhaled and took a deep breath. He turned his head and looked back over his shoulder at the tree. The tree seemed farther away than a half from inside the building, and as he edged closer, he realized that the branch he planned to climb onto wasn't as close to the ledge as he had originally appeared. In fact, it was at least four feet away, maybe farther. He was just realizing that he'd never been able to reach the tree branch with his right foot off the slippery ledge, and he started to fall.